Hello and welcome to Bharat Shakti Dot In. I am Brigadier Chatterjee. We've been running this series on Ukraine. We've already run a particular episode on firepower. We are now going to be going through air power, and hereafter, of course, we'll go to information warfare. Now, as far as the Ukraine campaign is concerned, we've had almost 11 months of this campaign going on. There are certain issues that we considered as facts which have been belied by this campaign so far. The first one. is the fact of a short and swift war we have this campaign going 11 months already and it doesn't quite appear very clear which way will it go that's one aspect of it the second aspect of it is we've used the we've seen the use of air power rather minimally by the world's second largest air power uh, nation the russians what were the reasons for it to get to know about the whole picture i have with me Uh, Air Commodore S.P. Singh. Air Commodore S.P. Singh has been a fighter pilot. He's also been into air defence operations, and current currently he is with the Centre for Air Power Studies. Welcome, Air Commodore. Thank you, Brigadier Chaudhary. It's always a pleasure to be with Bharat Shakti and to speak on the military issues. Thank you so much. Uh, right, Air Commodore. If I can start with my first question, I really would like to know what's the comparative analysis that you have of the strengths of both sides, the weaknesses of both sides. How do they match up, or do they match up at all? Absolutely. Yes, I think the very basic thing that everybody would like to know, and I must also compliment you for bringing the background to it and setting the pace for it all. So there are some facts I want to narrate. I'll just read it out so that we understand it. Sure. What is it? Sure. Uh, the main thing is like you said, the second largest air force, Russian air force, uh, is almost about four thousand aircraft, and in comparison. The offensive aircrafts, and in comparison, the you know Ukraine is just about uh, meeting 500. So almost one twentieth the size as the Ukrainian air force. Now the type of aircraft, if I start listing, will spend almost the entire time will spend less. But I'll just narrate two very important aircrafts. Like they have the mixed series aircraft, which are mixed 31 with 35, which are four generation and five generation aircraft, and the Su series. They are Su 24, Su 25, 27, 30, 34, 35, and going up to Su 57. Now, MiG-35 and Su-57 are the fifth generation aircraft that are there. They are going to have. In addition, they have a huge uh, fleet of bomber aircrafts, which are the TU series, TU-160, TU-95. Then they have the airborne warning control system, A-50 series. They have the tankers, the fuelers, and the electronic warfare aircrafts. Then the recce aircraft, which is again a large number, along with the massive transport fleet, which is the air air fleet, which is of AN series, AN-22, AN-26, AN. 124 and 140. In fact, one of the largest aircrafts on the front, and then the tankers of IL-78, plus another massive fleet of helicopters, which are the Kamov series, KS-27, K-52, K-226, and one the types that we also have in the Air Force are the Mi series. That is Mi-15, Mi-8, Mi-17, Mi-15, Mi-26, and Mi-38. So, with such large uh, force which they have, you can see the comparison. In comparison. The Ukraine has just about one twentieth the size, similar kind of even lesser uh, uh, technology and mass aircraft, and the number is also less. So you see, the, between them, the offensive capability is vastly different, and that's the differential that they have between the two air forces. Well, I, I think the story will be complete if you just go into the air defense operations. Also, we have seen the offensive air so, uh, operations uh, to launch them, the kind of resources that we have. What about the air defense? Uh, very interesting. I think you, you hit the nail on head. Uh, in fact, I was not covering the air defense. Air defense plays a major role, and when the you know to counter the offensive from the enemy, air defense will play a devastating role in destroying the enemy. And then, in terms of air defense, once again, there is no match between the two. The all the major air defense uh, equipment like from S three hundred, S four hundred, PMU, or the Gavar system, all these are with the ships in large number. In fact. India also has acquired the S-400. We are already in the process of acquiring more. So this is the kind of, and original SAM system. We already have a large number. That is exactly what they have with them. Comparatively, uh, Ukrainian once the uh, split took place of the USSR, the uh, only it was the Black Sea. The uh, S-300 PMU was left for protection from the any ingress or access uh, attack from the sea side. So the rest of the they have land covered, so they didn't have to bother. So there are very minimal kind of advance was left in the Ukraine as such when the split took place, and that is all they had. So the basic advance uh, with the uh, Ukrainian force is either the shoulder fired or the S300, uh, which is there. 
uh, the question which immediately comes to my mind is you have so much of your power available as far as uh, leading your fence is concerned and you have so much of uh, resources available for air defense also but then how did that uh, the Russians were rather constrained in use of uh, air power in the camp? Yeah, that's very very nice for that. First of all, let me start with this. The basic principles of air campaign or air power was not followed. And the two basic uh, tenets of the air power was the initial offensive use of the air power uh, with the you know CA DAD operations then uh, destroying the enemy air defenses followed by the offensive and then the uh, ground offensive starts and thereafter both build up together and then joint operations start. Now this entire terrain has not been followed. The, in, as for the psyche of the uh, Russian uh, forces which has been uh, folding out and has also known that they believe more in the ground offensives. That's why you see the, you see large number of tanks moved in, large number of artillery moved in, large number of soldiers moved in infantry and they started with a ground offensive with very minimal use of the air power just at particular areas and therefore that also stopped being repeat. Why they did this air operation? They also never bothered about the air defense of, available on the other side, that is Ukraine side. So the initial days, they suffered a lot of casualties, a lot of losses. The second portion which was wrong was, when they operated the cars, they uh, did not cater for the electronic warfare capability, that they should have jammed, carry out the suppression of enemy air defense, or carry out the destruction of the enemy These were not followed. And that's why you see, it's been seen in a protective manner. They were picking up some targets, launching some offensive, and that's the end of it. Before even destroying it completely or to the level they wanted, and the ground offensive followed. So there's a mismatch between the two, and that's how the entire campaign was not done, the way it is expected to be. But you know, when you have the power, you must use the weight. Absolutely. I'm talking normally. But uh, then, was there a constraint, let's say, in terms of they didn't give out to, they didn't want to give out their operational frequencies, etc., to the Americans who were possibly in the field, obviously with the Ukrainians? Oh, oh I, I mean, there must be a very big reason for this kind of a constraint being exercised. Or what is uh, this question of, well, in the bargain, you have more uh, casualties, so uh, civilian casualties. Was that the reason? I think you're very right. There are multiple reasons which they uh, come out and all. First and foremost is that they, I think, uh, undersess the capability of the Ukrainians, backed by the Americans and the NATO. Uh, this was a kind of thing, and maybe the exact amount of information or recce was not carried out to assess the capability before launching the offensive. So that is one portion, and this, so they, when they moved in, they didn't expect so much of retaliation. Second thing, which when they launched the offensive, the criteria of the offensive was that to carry out certain damage to certain military targets only. The reason is, I think, is more of a, from the diaspora point of view, because half of the Ukrainians are resistance in Russia, and Russians are in Ukraine. So that also could have been playing on their mind as to not to cause any damage, collateral damage also to civilian targets. Thirdly, when the NATO has already placed its electronic sensors on that area close by, and in all the areas where they were waiting for this, so the high end equipment, Russians were reluctant to operate. Because the, otherwise, like you like said, their frequencies could have been taken out and they could have been, uh, not been able to uh, use them in later war if it were a slave for either. So, to keep preserve their uh, data, preserve this, and they were using the uh, second generation or third generation, at best, fourth generation acres and the weapons. And that is one of the reasons. But they also, I think, their thought, thought was that this was more than enough to uh, get their way through and let the ground forces thereafter take off, which didn't happen. And that's why they were to All right, two issues, you know, which come up when we go into warfare today. Uh, one is precision, the other is long range. So keep that in view and just let have your comment. Yeah, absolutely. So like I'll tell you, what they did was, Russians, as per the entire thing you see in OLG, initially they did choose because the uh, targets were all area targets. They were trying to just dump some area targets, bomb drums, ammo drums, or the convoys. So they used the area weapons, which are a non-precision weapon. But as they close in, they have not chose very specific military targets and they use precision weapons. So PGMs was used, but up to a limited extent. They were only picking up certain targets they were using. Second part of this uh, analogy is what they were using is that they didn't want to waste entire their arsenal. Too much of precision weapon. Long range weapons are available, but unfortunately the problem is the distances are, are so less that the long range weapons are not so much required. And uh, the Russians have a huge arsenal, ranging from 
weapons from over 30 kilometers to 300 kilometers to now when 3000 kilometers. So they chose the weapons as per the destruction required, amount of destruction required, and the distance available. Unfortunately, in this war, they are dependent more on helicopters rather than the fighters. So because they because their distances in war, they were very comfortable with using large more helicopters with the weapons that they had, and they thought they will be able to achieve their aim. And that's why this we didn't see very very long range weapons come into play, which are not by fighters, and also we didn't see the uh, high amount of precision weapons being used. Well, they have another question about the uh, fighter aircrafts being used over there. Su-57 being used is in the news for the last two three days. Any comments on that? It's just come in now. It's one of the latest aircraft, that's and they're fielding it very late in the day. Yeah. Perhaps. So what happens? The, if you see now how the things have changed, you see the beginning of the war till now the winters are not set in. We are out of winter when the war started, as the entire land force were able to move in, and the other aircrafts, which are the similar aircraft, could be used. But now the entire while in the last two months, if you watch, the entire war has shifted to drones and the missile attacks. So it become almost like a aerial weapon wire, uh, war, rather than being ground offensive. Very limited ground offensives are going on, or contact war is going on in selected places. Otherwise, the number of missile attacks have been increasing. Really. And this is where they have assessed that now is the time the Su-57 can be used for certain specific targets where it has got the long-range uh, weapon capability as well as the precision required. So that's where they are now using it and it's got the protection. So this is the assessment as per their intended input which they feel they can use. Though I still feel even at this stage it is not going to yield the effect which is their design. Because the war is going to now if you continue the way it is going, uh, they will have to come back to larger number of forces and no large and force engagement has been done as such. So this minimum split uh, rule of the year part uh, doesn't yield the effect that is required. All right, one last question for this session. Uh, we'll have another session later on. Uh, the last question is about helicopters. Like you said initially, in my very first question, that there were a large fleet of helicopters. Absolutely. And they utilized it also Absolutely. in between, like you said. So can you give us a little more insight into helicopter operation? See, helicopters, they have majorly, they have used the Cabo series ACA, which are the armed air trusts and uh, attack trusts. And uh, because the targets are so close by, they, it was like a, almost like a tactical war which is going on. And they, since they have been planned to be used along with the army offensive, so they were exactly used in that manner. And uh, most of the ACA, which are, most of uh, the targets which are far from there, where the fighters were used, but majority of targets in the eastern sector where they wanted to launch a major offensive, down the season, they are the they were well within the range of helicopters. The helicopter the range is up to 1100 kilometers. So they're well within the range, and helicopters are easy to operate and weapon fire and come back. And the kind of destruction they want to do was achievable by the helicopters. Now that's why they use it. The mistake which I covered earlier is the main thing is that they did not ensure the CAD operation, that is the suppression of enemy air defense and the destruction of enemy air defense. Whereby it caused a lot of damages to their helicopters. They were shot off by Stinger and Canada guys and also the ADVAT system which were provided by the uh, NATO and the Americans. And that's where they, they had to take a setback. That's how the helicopters were used. Mostly they were used in the nearby zone only. See, and then it's, uh, if, you, if I take you to back to Afghanistan a little bit and then also come over here and compare the two. Uh, you know, when Stingers were given freely yeah. to the Afghan Mujahideen, that's when the Russians had to really Absolutely. rely much lesser. They could rely much less on helicopters. Right. A situation like that uh, would occur here also. There's enough of short of fire missiles being given. So, and it doesn't take much training, it doesn't take much coordination with the overall air defense system. It's you use it. So, I have a feeling you can train the Russians. Absolutely. No, no, it's not that I think they would have the simple thing was that, you know, the first is Bova says it requires you, as we understand, sir, we, his main requirement is to have the intelligence as to where they are. That they, Stringer or the air defense systems have not been taken out by the uh, fighter and air for electronic means or by the physical destruction. That is led to these destructions. So they had to stop for a while, they take a steady pause in front there to take and then relaunch. They changed their tactics in routine. They changed uh, multiple times. They changed their tactics to deploy the helicopters in, in a different manner. And they brought on to long range weapons in, so that they can uh, fire from uh, out of range of the stinger. They started flying at a higher altitude. So these changes were brought in. But this could have been done right in the beginning. They wouldn't have suffered so many losses. But helicopters are mainly used because of the availability and they didn't want to lose their highly precise weapons, that is, fighters which are modern for fighters' preparation. 
or the modern day weapons. This was the reason, and they were, uh, I'll say, they were quite contented with the kind of damage they were able to cause because of the helicopters. Right. Uh, thank you, Commodore. Thank you so much for joining us over here, and I request you to join us for our part two also subsequently. And thank you, viewers. Thanks for tuning into Bhagat Shakti dot in, and do tune in every Monday at six pm, and you will find a continuation of the Ukraine series episodes. Thank you.